Okay, hey, welcome back everybody to our mini podcast series about the NAR settlement. Uh, today I got Daryl Davis, who's been talking about this lawsuit and and what's going on with NAR since the beginning. And maybe, yeah. you know, one of the guys I might go to to hear what's going on and and uh, make plans for the future. So, uh, Daryl, welcome. Thank, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so, Daryl, let's talk. <laughs> Just I, without going into too much detail here, let, let's. What do people need to hear? You know, what is your take on what's going on, and, and maybe touch on why are why people are freaking out? Well, what's going on is I ha I haven't left this chair since November, so I'm going to need you to call the ambulance to because my legs they not I can't feel them anymore. Uh, but do that after this session. Other than that, I, I'm going to tell you something about the freak out. People, people are freaking out and there's no, I'm going to, I'm going to make this so simple. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make this the most boring podcast you ever had because we are going to so simplify this so people can stop having aneurysms. The very simple thing that this, this lawsuit said is that two things. Number one. The Selling Brokers Commission is coming off of the MLS. That's number one. Number two, the agent that's going to work with the buyer before they show many houses, they need to have a, an agreement in place. That's all that happened. It, there's nothing that says the seller can't pay a Selling Brokers Commission. There's nothing that says that they list the selling agent can't ask about getting a commission. There's nothing about the listing agent can't pay to, as a matter of fact, the listing agent can even advertise what the fee is going to be to the selling agent. It just can't be on the MLS form. That's it. So it's really not that big of a deal when you think about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, haven't you been teaching people to have a buyer's agency agreement anyway? Yes. Now, let me tell you. Uh, now, listen, there's other things about it, right? There's there's a list of 87 brokerages that, that, that Catchmark still wants to go after because he wants this to be his retirement plan. And by the way, I have nothing against Catchmark. He's a very brilliant attorney because <laughs> he got $418 million out of NAR. Kudos yeah. to him. The other thing is people should not be negative on NAR because I think NAR, I mean, listen, the, the initial judgment of $1.78 billion, I, I don't know. I wasn't in the room. I didn't know how that attorney did for us on the NAR side. Maybe he did a bad or she did a bad job. I don't know. But, but, but I'm not pro NAR. I am pro real estate professional. And I will say for the real estate agents, NAR, NAR did what they had could do. Catchmark did not want those 87 brokers to be part of it because he said, I'm not going to agree with you guys if you're going to include the 87. I still want to go after them and shake them for some money because they got big pockets. So, um, but to answer your question, yes, we've been telling agents you should have you should have a working relationship agreement. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a tip uh for, for your people here right now, Curtis. So and I wish this was my idea. It's not. It came from one of my clients. And, and what he said is he's telling his agents they don't have to sell buyer agency agreements for a buyer to work exclusively with the agent for all showings. It's, so if an agent is uncomfortable doing buyer agency, conversation with a buyer, and asking for a fee, you can do a smaller version of it and it would still uh, handle the, uh, the, the lawsuit. And that's this, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, any house that I show you, you're signing this agreement saying, Daryl, we understand what your fee is uh, and that we guarantee you're gonna get paid one way or the other. Whether I'll cut you the check or we'll get it from the seller, you're gonna try and get it from the seller, da da da. But we understand whatever you show us, this is what you expect to get paid. But we can still work with other agents. We're not exclusively locked in with you. So that would, that, that would, I'm not recommending that. But if an agent is nervous about getting a buyer to lock in 
on everything and how to communicate that, this is a little um, yeah. uh, option. Well, I think the lawsuit opens up um, a disclaimer, makes it easier to talk about a, a, a working agreement because you have to say, hey, the law requires us now. We, right. we have to have, we have, you know, that makes it easier for people who are nervous to talk about that. Just blame, blame the law. Hey, I mean, I, this is not me. This is yeah. this guy, Catchmark. They, right. I got to do this now. Right. So, yeah, I think, well, look, um, you, you've always taught people to have a, a balanced business of listings and, and buyers. And, and, and so, I mean, obviously I'm biased because we help lots of agents do listings, but it is, is kind of the answer of, Hey, maybe you, you would be less freaked out about some of this uncertainty if you just had listing inventory. Well, you know, a lot of the agents, the ones that are freaking out, most of the ones that are not consider themselves listing agents and they like working with buyers and, and now they're being faced with, okay, uh, agent, uh, it's not going to be that easy to just throw buyers in your car and show them and they buy and you get paid. You're going to have to now work a little bit more, uh, meaning you're going to have to validate your value and communicate that to a buyer and explain to them what you promise to do for them and have them commit to you as well to make sure that your commission is covered. And so, yeah, it, the, so on the buyer side, there's more work to be done. And honestly, I hope we're not going to show this recording outside of our real estate community, Curtis, because I got something that I'm going to say that I don't think I want catch mark to hear. But I think that two things are going to happen. Number one is it's going to be easier to get listings. And number two, the total commission is actually going to go up, not down, like they say. Now, let me, let me, I can, I can see from your face, yeah. you're wondering what I'm thinking. I'll tell you That's what right. I'm thinking there, Curtis. See, in the old days, before this lawsuit settlement, we'd have, we go on a listing appointment, we tell a homeowner, all right, here's my fee. My fee is, and by the way, just as a disclaimer, we're using numbers as an example. We are not price fixing for the industry. Okay. Now we did the disclaimer. So you go on a listing appointment and say, listen, Mr. Miss Hunter, my, my commission is, five or six or seven, whatever the heck you would say. And then from that, I'm going to pay out to the selling agent, but, 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 but whatever the listing appointment, it sounds like 7%, 6%. That's a lot of money. 500,000 times six is 30,000. That's a lot of money. Yes. Now we don't have to do that. Now what we should be doing is say, Mr. Miss Hannah, there's two sides of every contract. There's buy side and the selling side. And we, we are decoupling it because of the, the lawsuit. So for me, if for me to do what I do for you, it's only 3%. I have a 2% plan. I have a three and a 4% plan, but let's just go with the 3%. You do tiers, Curtis. It's another thing right. I'm teaching tiers. But anyway, we do 6%. I mean, we do 3%, for example, these are just numbers, example, 3%. And the homeowner will probably say, I could do 3%. That, yeah, because don't they say that now? Bring me a buy and I'll pay you three. Okay, good. Right. So it's the listing fee is only 3%. Great, good, 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 good. So it's so a sign, good. Oh, now by the way, the selling side, we have to discuss that now. Do you want to pay to something to the selling agent? You don't have to because they, they're going to work that out. Maybe they're going to propose it in an offer to put it into the contract. But I think we should give an incentive. Here's why. And then you sell the homeowner on the value of paying out one, two, or three percent to the selling agent as an incentive. So now if you got a three or 4% commission, cause it sounds low and then we're paying out three, now we're up to seven on that example. So I, I think, I think that's what's going to happen. No, I, I mean, I saw in your Facebook group, I, I don't know today or yesterday, somebody that, that was doing that same thing and, and landed the contract and made sense. And be, because consumers are asking the question already in listing appointments. Oh, I thought I didn't have to pay that anymore. And so, the conversation's already coming up. So uh, just just as a side note, if you guys aren't following Daryl, you know, he's giving you scripts on how to handle these objections in your listing presentations anyway. I'm going to get, I'll give, I'll give them, a, people, if they go to narlawsuit.com, narlawsuit.com, um, that's where all of our stuff is in relationship to the lawsuit. So you'll see stuff there for you guys. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 
Awesome. Daryl, any, any, any last words of advice for people who are, who are yes. consumed is, with the lawsuit? Yes. This is, I'm going to tell you three, three things to do or four. I don't know. Let's, let's Curtis count with me as I <laughs> rattle okay. these items off. Number there's, one. There's, there's, well, number one, you only have a few things that you need to decide and do right now. Number one is decide what is your commission model for the listing appointment. So are you going to continue to do the old model, which is fine, by the way, I don't mean old is bad. The original model where you just talk to a homeowner and say, here's my fee, it's five, it's six, it's seven. And from that fee, I'm going to pay out X amount of dollars. Okay. There is so, the, or you're going to do, no, I'm just going to list the listing side feeds, 3%, 4%, get them to commit to that, then have the conversation about the other half of the fee. All right. So decide what your commission model is when you're on a listing appointment. Number two, decide what your fee is when you talk to buyers. When you sit with the buyer explaining the agreement and the, the buyer agency and how that works, uh, what's your going to be your standard? Is it going to be 1%, 2%, 3%? You got to decide what's your number. By the way, I suggest you go with the higher number because then you can always negotiate down. You can't go the other way. So start with the higher number. It's better to say three. And then the seller, you find out they're offering two. You, ex you accept it too. If you want to put the deal together, you cut it blah, blah, like that. So decide on the uh, selling commission model, the listing commission model, the selling commission model. The, and the third thing to do is practice or get master those two conversations. So you can decide your business model is sitting right here now, or think about it when you're sleeping in bed at night and laying there, think about well, how am I going to redo my business model? Decide that once you decide your model, then the third thing is you have to practice, get good at those two conversations. Okay. And then the fourth thing to do, is stay the hell out of the Facebook groups where everybody is pacificating or whatever the word is, their opinions and nonsense about this lawsuit and NAR is not worth the dues and the ba ba ba. Let me give you an analogy and we'll leave it on that. There are, when you go to a football game, there's two groups of people there's the people on the field and then there's the people in the bleachers. Now, the people on the field, the players, they're getting banged up, they're getting having wins, they're having failures, but they're playing the game of moving the ball down the court to win. They're playing the game of football. Now, the people in the bleachers, they think they're playing the game of football. They feel very passionate and they're excited and some of them have tattoos and they know what the coach should do and the quarterback should do. Like, they know, they're their expert at the but they're sitting in the bleachers. You hear what I'm They ain't on the field playing the game. Those people in the Facebook group and all of their commenting, they're the bleachers sit people sitting in the bleachers commenting about the game. Don't sit in the bleachers. Get out of those groups. Don't listen to those people. Do what I said. Three things. Decide your commission model on the listing side, on the buyer side, and then master those conversations, and then go help some people in this business. Thank you very much. Daryl, thanks so much for being with us today. I think we'll end it right there on that note. Please, thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Call the ambulance and get me out of this seat. <laughs>